Hi, uh, this is Janet Fitch, and uh, it is noon on Wednesday, so it is Writing Wednesday when I answer your writing questions. Um, uh, you can leave questions in the comments uh, if you have questions that come up. Um, I'm here to address issues of craft, of issues of uh, of uh, emotion, uh, issues, all the kinds of issues that writers have. So um, we do have questions today. So uh, drag my computer over here. Um, hope it's been going well for you. Um, it's a time, summer, a lot of good book releases right now. Uh, looking forward to reading um, and reading and reading and reading. Um, I would, uh, I'm going to start with a question if you don't have one for me. Um, this question today is, what can you do if you love reading novels and would love to write one, but you're really only any good at writing short stories and flash fiction? Hey, Susie. Um, that is a really good question. So this person is a likes to read novels but uh, and would like to write one but uh, has only produced short stories and flash fiction. Um, I think, hi Jill, I think this is a really good way to start writing longer fiction is to um, address shorter fiction. And uh, so we'll talk a little bit about how you would make the transition uh, from shorter fiction to longer fiction. Um, if that is what this person reads, perhaps that's what they would like to um, give, their, give it a try. Um, the major difference between short fiction and the novel besides length, is that there is a degree of inventiveness in the short story and in flash fiction that it's like, you, you know, an appetizer that is very highly flavored um, and you just get a little bit and it's like and then you go on to other courses um, in a good meal. Whereas, you know, that highly flavored appetizer might be fabulous uh, in brief. To take it and try to have uh, an entire huge meal composed of extremely uh, highly flavored, interesting um, appetizers. If anybody has ever done this, you know that you get quite a case of indigestion. Um, things don't go together. It's too intense. You get sick of, um, you know, you can't make a meal, a big meal out of something like that. So some people whose imagination runs to the short story. Um, the novel needs other certain other elements. You know, it's funny because a novel is longer. You think that it's more complex and it can handle all the complexity of an intense short story. But in fact, sometimes that you know, that intensity and profusion of detail, um, imagine it, you know, imaginative spaces, um, you can do things in the short story that you can't, I won't say can't, but uh, sometimes the techniques overwhelm a longer narrative. It's just too dense. Um, you can't get that many fireworks into a story that doesn't otherwise seem to be moving forward except 
fireworks after fireworks after fireworks, and it, it all kinds of becomes muddled together in the mind of the reader. So one of the difficulties that you might be having is moving from the experiment of the short story, the, the fireworks, the genius of short story, and then trying to harness, it's like putting, putting that crazy racehorse into harness and trying to make it pull the milk truck and the milk truck falls over a lot. Um, so that could be, you know, I'm not quite sure, you know, where the stumbling block with this person is, but that's just a caveat. If you're writing a lot of short stories, how to step back and let things, let's see, you know, it's, um, it's not just packing in a bunch of short stories into the length of a novel. Although the, you know, the novel in stories is a, uh, you know, modern, contemporary, uh, if not favorite, a, a contemporary, um, it's to the contemporary taste. There are a lot of novels in short stories. So the way that works is, um, is you write about a group of people or you write short stories with one person as the you know the same person as a protagonist or a small group of people so that and in the same time frame the same city same location and then they start reflecting each other like mirrors and in the places kind of between the chapters between the stories uh, we we begin to assemble a an overall picture of this inner town, the interactions. Um, it's almost um, it's a multi point of view novel, um, and people are very people really enjoy those those novels. So that's one way of going about it. Um, I'm. You know, I've always encouraged people to think of the novel, uh, not, not of writing a novel, but of writing a scene and then writing another scene, whatever you see very clearly. Um, and they will have, you'll find the connections uh, eventually. Um, you know, how did... Gary get into that closet. If you just see Gary crouched on the floor of the closet, uh, you know, uh, just hoping to disappear and you start unpacking like why he's so freaked out that he's on the floor of the closet. What's in the closet? Um, you get a feeling more of Gary and why he's so freaked out. And then you might see the scene that came before that. Uh, maybe a couple of nights earlier, and there was a scene. Uh, and then you might get him coming out, you know, coming out of the closet. Um, or you might see him a month later um, denying there was ever a problem, or uh, in a hospital, or in Fiji. Um, so don't think you have to be chron chronological with your scenes. Uh, write what you see and the connections will start to appear. So see Jeff here says, in many ways a novel is a collection of short stories. Chapters and scenes are little stories with their own arcs and conflicts. Treat the scenes as standalones and they'll also become novel contents. Yeah, that's, that's um, you know, treating each chapter as a discrete experience. But writing the novel for a short story writer um, is, you need, you know, you start becoming a little bit more uh, pinning things down. There's an evanescence about, you know, to talk about what is a short story. It's like, what is a, you know, what is a, what is a, 
human being. What is a girl? You know, a girl is everything. So a short story uh, can be, you know, so many different things. But in general, their um, modern short stories are have an evanescent quality. And having scene after scene after scene with that evanescent quality can start to wear on the reader of a novel who's looking for more push or profluence from one to the next. Uh, something happens in each story where the character can't go back to the way it was before. And then the writer has to pick up on that. And when they continue with the story, that character has changed. So there is there are elements, story elements, that come into play in a novel that you don't have to worry about in a short story. It's done when it's done. You know, 12 pages, 24, 30, you're out. Um, whereas in a short story, in a novel, things have consequences. So then you go from one to the next. Not always. You can always, there are, um, there are always going to be exceptions to everything that I'm saying. And, uh, you know, everybody can always pick up on something. It's like, well, so-and-so did, did, you know, did blah, blah, blah in some brilliant novel. Um, and so these rules are, are clarifications but it's not the last word, you know, you can buck anything that you want. It's your, it's your work. But this is somebody who's having a problem. So um, bringing up exceptions uh, is not as helpful to somebody who's having an active problem uh, as it is when you're thinking, what is a novel? You know, what is a novel and why, how does it differ from a sh collection of short stories? Um, a short, you know, collection of short stories will have might have a thematic, uh, or, you know, thematic uh, center of gravity. They might have a stylistic center of gravity. They might have um, a locational center of gravity. You know, a bunch of Faulkner short stories are all going to be about um, set in the same. Not all of them, but most of them will be set in a small southern town with an element of decadence, of decay, of sort of populist anger, um, uh, fruitless cruelty, uh, you know, there's and light, beautiful long sentences. Um, but the difference between that and a novel is that a novel, all those parts will be worrying the same problem. They will be gnawing at the same problem like a dog on a bone just in this chapter this chapter this chapter there will be central issues that they will be gnawing on and it the whole thing is of a piece as well as having interesting parts the whole novel is like an equation that is you're trying to solve through in different ways, through this scene, this scene, this scene, the characters are working on their problem. And, you know, the author thinks of the overall questions. So, you know, you can start out writing a bunch of scenes about um, maybe a bunch of scenes about um, little boys in Missouri and growing up in Missouri and these the group of little boys that grow up. Um, there will be a central issue that will usually not reveal itself until the end of the f first draft, maybe second draft, maybe third draft, that the stories of these boys show different aspects of this central issue. And the way things eventually turn out in the novel will show what the writer felt was the real outcome of that issue. What the real, you know, what's the real statement about friendship or real statement about growing up as a man or whatever. Um, you know, what does the author ultimately conclude about things? 
uh, which is that push towards a central problem or solving some sort of issue that you don't even know. You start writing, you just write. And then the issue, what the central problem, will come up out of it when you're thinking about it. Like Usually you're asking yourself, what the hell is this about? You don't usually have to ask yourself what the hell this is about until you try to end it. And then those thematic questions start to arise. And, you know, you don't go into a novel thinking about what the overall question is. You're just thinking, you know, you're writing a story about two little boys in Missouri, or you're writing a story about this um, uh, mentally um, developmentally handicapped boy looking up in the tree, seeing his sister up in the tree and her panties are muddy because she got in the creek and he starts screaming and nobody knows why. Um, I mean, this is the beginning of The Sound and the Fury in Faulkner's imagination. It's very interesting to read how books begin and then how of novels, how novels begin and then how they completely change as, as the writer works on them to answer like an image, like they'll take an image, like that image of Caddy up in the tree and Benji screaming and sound of, you know, the beginning of Sound of the Fury in Faulkner's mind, and then how that evolved into a novel. Uh, I wrote a review in the Los Angeles Review of Books, if you're interested, on um, uh, Bill Blaisdell um, followed the development of Anna Karenina uh, as Tolstoy is writing it called uh, Becoming Anna Karenina, I believe. Um, so you'll see it if you go to LARB or Los Angeles Review of Books. Uh, you'll see an art, uh, the review I did of it and it kind of explains it. So you, if you don't want to read the whole book, you can <laughs> read pieces of it. Um, and, uh, you know, we see it evolve from um, he was blocked on a massive novel he wanted to write about Peter the Great. Um, and uh, he started writing a story like a Pushkin. He read a Pushkin story. And Pushkin is like 18th century, um, which is the era of the dandy and the era of, you know, people dueling. And he actually was killed in a duel. And it's very witty and kind of snarky. and fun. Um, and uh, so he started writing a story about a, a society woman, a very Pushkinian uh, story about a society woman who has an affair and kills herself. You know, like serves her right kind of thing. But as he was writing it, he could not help being Tolstoy. And he began to see things about her that changed her. So she, you know, gradually it stopped being this snarky tale of the society woman, frivolous society woman who killed, ends up killing herself over an affair. And he, it deepens, it deepens because as an artist, he is super, um, as an artist, he is super honest. And he keeps asking himself, what does she really do? What is she really like? How human the situation is and all concerned and began to change it. And so she starts becoming a more sensitive, interesting, you know, troubled individual. Um, and her story becomes more and more, not quite heroic, but you know, heroic, or at least on that scale, tra truly tragic. Um, he changed the husband who was, you know, he was the kind guy and she was the frivolous one who has the affair cheating on him. And he's, she's, he starts changing the husband to be less appealing, um, making the lover, of course, more appealing. Um, and how, so, Anyway, what I'm trying to say is novels evolve. They deepen. You have your, your starting point, which is the same thing as a short story. You have your starting point, uh, what you think it's going to be about. You start writing. 
and then you you know you keep digging you keep asking yourself what would this person do why do I care what's going on here how do they change what why is this what they come in the scene and they mill around a little bit and then they leave did anything really happen in that scene how do I make something happen in that scene? And once something happens in the scene where the character can't go back to the way that it was before, then the novel starts pushing you. And what you that's what you want. You want the novel pushing you forward. You don't want to be dragging it. You don't want to be like, oh, let's have them, you know, uh, having sort of plot-oriented twists instead of emotional movement. So, oh, we could take her to this, and the, her brother could show up, and, you know, having all this extraneous stuff instead of letting it grow out of what you've just done. So the difference between the novel and a sort of a, a collection of short stories, or even the novel in, in uh, short, the novel, the short story, uh, novel in stories kind of novel, uh, the novel that's all of a piece has a drive to it it has an engine to it and and it's so it has elements that the short story the novel in stories is sort of a halfway house uh i hate to say a sort of training wheels it's a halfway house people really like it so i'm not putting it down and some people naturally write short stories and they when put into a novelistic, you know, um, profluent type of situation where you want the story to drive forward from, you know, into ch chapters to drive into other chapters, the emotional movement from one to the other to the other. Um, uh, some people, that they their ideas fall apart when they try to do that. And that that doesn't mean just beginner writers. That means, you know, people who accomplish short story writers sometimes don't write very good novels um, because they excel at that, um, they excel at that, uh, that, br fi that brief firework, you know, that is a short story. Uh, and the kind of um, e evanescent ending. Uh, like, what are we supposed to get out of this? You know, it, it closes down for a moment and then it opens up again. So it's like, sometimes you you go back to the beginning and you go, now what was that about? The ending really surprises you. And then you go back and read it again to see how that moved through the short story. Uh, a novel, too much evanescence, uh, can kind of strand your reader a bit, you know, like the boat without the wind and the sails. Um, so you, um, if this, uh, this reader wanted to, to write, a, you know, definitely wants to write a novel, but only really good at writing short stories and flash fiction, what I would say is um, take a short story that you've already written that you really seems to be bulging at the seams. Like there seems to be a lot more to say about these people, about this situation. And then think about where would they go after the end of the story? Or how did they get into that situation? So you can work forward as, I mean, you can work earlier in the book as well as later. I, you know, certainly did this with Paint It Black, um, my second novel, which is, the short story was really about the climax of that novel in a very different form. And then I went forward, uh, I went earlier in the story to try to, understand who these people were it was just a short story you know who are these people how did they meet you know um where do they come from what voice do i want to use um you know paint it black originally had three voiced characters three point of view characters and i tried that for about 100 pages 
and then went to the most, uh, the least um, familiar of the voices, which was my uh, my punk rock narrator, uh, Josie Tyrell. Uh, got rid of the other people and started writing forward in the book until I kind of picked up that element, the climax of the book that had really set it all up. Um, so you can work forward and backward. Um, my When I wrote White Oleander, uh, it's kind of an episodic novel, which might be helpful for a short story writer who's trying to crack the, uh, the novel. Um, that instead of a story, think of a sequence of scenes that tell a part of a story. So say it's a story of, um, oh, a favorite children's book was uh, King of the Wind. So it was about this uh, Arabian stallion from the vast uh, stables of the Sultan. And it was gonna be given as a gift to um, uh, the King of England or some major racing figure or something. And so it's this horse's story. And so it breaks into, like any journey, it breaks into, se you know, sequences. So that the sequence of when he was a cart horse and he was misdelivered and the scene where he's being trained and the scene where, you know, the sequence. So, you know, it starts blocking out into episodes. So you can think that that might be a good transition for somebody who's a natural short story writer. Um, but to have something happen in every scene, I mean, have it happen so that um, the character can't go back to the way it was before. Because in a short story, a character doesn't have to change necessarily. You know, the reader changes. You get a look at something and it's like, oh, and then, that, then it's over. It doesn't even need the character to go, oh, the character can, but sometimes it's the reader that goes, oh, um, whereas in a, the development of a novel, that character changes, your point of view character changes, um, and you're sent, you have a central issue that you're chewing on, something that you need to resolve for yourself, something that comes out of what you've been writing, because you're, for me, the the novel is very instinctive, and I try not to th think too much about it. I try not to intellectualize what I'm writing. I don't outline. I don't try to figure out themes and all that stuff. You know, I'm really staying very close to my characters, what they would do in the scene, the conflict, uh, and who, you know, what happens, who wins, who loses, you know, what is the character draw from the scene that they can't go back to the way it was before and moving them along. So I'm doing that, but as I reach the end of the trying, like the last fourth of the novel, uh, in a first draft, usually second draft maybe, I'm pushing towards then, I have to know what it's about, like what it's the, thematically, what it's about, um, so that I can, <laughs> excuse me, so that I can um, bring it home. You know, if I can't bring it home, it's just going to be one thing after another, after another, after another, which is not a novel. There is no driving force to that. You know, it has to be going somewhere. And whenever I feel it's not going anywhere, I, you know, writers can feel that. It's kind of awful. It's like a really terrible feeling. It's like, oh my God, oh my God, this is not going anywhere. That's the time to stop and start thinking about what the hell is this about? What is this about? And uh, making sure that the scene that you're working on, that you suddenly are feeling very insecure about, where the hell is this, what am I doing? Always look and 
did something happen? Was there a change? Can the character just go back to the way it was before? Are you milling around? So there's two things when you're milling around in a, in a scene or a chapter. Um, because it can be a chapter can be one scene if you like short chapters. Uh, a chapter can be a couple of scenes, the same location. A chapter is working on the same issue or the same location and time. Um, there might be two or three scenes. You know, a scene is a single place, once one place, one time, and something happens that you can't go back to the way it was before. So there might be, a chapter might have three scenes, it might have two scenes, it might have one scene. Um, long chapters might have, might be, have what you call a sequence of scenes. So one that leads right to another, leads right to another, leads right to another, uh, all in a group. And then in between chapters, you let time pass and start again in a different, different, whole tenor. So I like to think um, at the community of writers this summer, I'm going to be talking about um, uh, plot. And it'll be funny to be in a plot uh, um, panel because I'm not really a fan of plotsy writing. I, you know, anybody who's worked with me knows that, you know, I, I'm not looking for external cool plot twists and like that, you know, as a way to tell a story. Um, I don't like plotsy solutions to problems. I like character solutions to problems. Um, and, uh, um, but I go by, I call it the symphonic method. So the symphonic method is I'm looking for variation. So if I've had a two person scene or th sequence of scene, I'll, I'll try for a group next time, or a single, or a trio, or you know, just like you would in a in a in or, or in an orchestra. You know, you'd have full orchestra, you'd have trios, you'd have quartets, you'd have you know uh, solos, or in a choir, you know, full chorus, trio, quartet, etc. And I'll vary day and night. I'll vary internal exterior scenes. Um, you know, just always changing it up because it's, you don't want to, to I, I'm thinking of the short story writer and thinking, you know, how do you, once you've finished your scene or your sequence, how do you know what's next? First of all, there's a pressure, whatever the change is, is, pushing your character into the next thing. So if they just got mad at their mother and slammed the door and walked out the door, your next scene would be in response to that. Where did they go? Also, it's not going to be in the house. So you're obviously already changing the location, freshening the reader. And you'll have different thoughts when you're sitting, uh, you know, you go down to oh, look, they went to, you know, Jack's motorcycle bar. All right, so there they are. And what are they thinking about? They're still thinking about the flavor of that last encounter will still be in the reader's mind as they're sitting there ordering their third Jack Daniels and thinking about their relationship with their mother and maybe getting into a conversation with somebody about something completely different, but it'll worry that same nerve a little bit. So it might not be about mothers, but it might be about um, escape or what you owe people or where are you from? What does it mean to be from somebody? What does it mean to be part of a family? Uh, Ruthie said, just what I needed to hear today, I usually like to write one scene per chapter, but today I'm working on a new chapter which is bulging at the seams with the same theme and now multiple scenes. So that's a sequence. And you can break a sequence, you can be in the middle of a sequence, and then go to a new chapter, and it's kind of a, a bit of a cliffhanger. Um, or you can finish, finish it within the chapter and it'll just be a longer chapter. 
You know, there's no law that says you have to make a new chapter every time you have a new scene. If scenes are related, you keep them together. Um, let's see, any questions? Yeah. But yeah, the short, short shorts become short stories. And then you find a short story that pushes out. It, it, it's not done yet. You know, you've spent 30 pages on it or whatever. And there's just more to go. So then if you decide to write a novel from it, you might look at how how much air is there in that story. Is it pretty, you know, it, usually short stories are very tight and not very airy. And if it feels like, this is pretty dense. You might want to ex cut that story up into chapters and expand each part a little bit. Um, and you don't have to just jump off the blocks with a novel like you do a short story. You might want to take a little more time opening the story back up and get a maybe have a bigger opening. If, if the short story would be the beginning of the novel, you might want to open it up a little bit more uh, and give the sense that something large is on the way. You know, you don't have to just start with somebody talking and somebody gets punched in the head, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, that you can give us a chance to settle into your book. Here at Malaika's got a question uh, about organizing mechanism in a group of stories that will become a book. My adult student is writing a book of stories and we're working on how to organize the connections to people and themes. He's using Word and Scrivener. Well, Scrivener is great because you can move stuff around easily. Word is fine. Print them out. I'm a very physical person. I'm a real tactile person. I want to handle things. You know, and so what you're doing is you're looking for flow. And you can, you usually you'll group a short story by theme. You know, here, say here are my, uh, um, here are my stories about working in a, um, in a mental hospital. Here are my stories about my diff a difficult personal, about difficult personal life. So the mental hospital stories are in the first section, then my stories about my, you know, about difficult marriages and relationships would be the next section, and then uh, there might be a section about um, uh, dogs. Maybe I have a but turns out I have a bunch of stories about dogs. Okay, that's next. And then, so you'd organize them that way. And then you just move stuff around. And where's the flow? You know, where would you start a, you know, what are you going to call the collection? Um, I, when I first got my agent, I sent a box full of short stories. I'd say there were 30 short stories um, in this box. And... He said that uh, this is not a collection. This is just a bunch of short stories. Uh, but if you ever have anything I can sell, um, I'd be happy to represent you. So I started writing novels. That was my what I wanted to do anyway. And now I had an agent. Yay! Um, I f it's like what uh, I think the. One of the things in deciding to organize a uh, short story collection is deciding what it's about. You know, like what are you going to call it? And then you can, based on what you think you're going to call it, or what you think about your strongest story maybe, and then what will go with that, if you have a lot of short stories. Um, what will go with that? What's the flow? Do you put the most shocking story to begin with? Maybe. Um, let me get... 
let me get a, there's a wonderful collection called Cleanness by um, Garth Greenwell. And that was kind of an interestingly organized short story collection. Let's see if I can find it quickly. Here's my hallway. Here's my book. Here's my bookcase that I know it's in. Um, okay, if I can't find it quickly, I won't, uh, I won't persist. Cleanness. Oh, shoot. Okay, I can't find it quickly, so I'm going to give up on it quickly. Um, <laughs> let's see where it might be. Okay, well, questions come up, and then I don't have quite the book I want to find to, to talk about it. Um, why don't I look at a... Um, uh, Look at it online. But I believe that what the order of books in cleanness, um, I think the order of stories that he put the most shocking story first. It was really quite, quite an eye opener. Um, it's about, uh, um, let's see, it's about a queer guy in Bulgaria teaching and uh, he's got kind of a per he's got definitely has his kink and I think that the the most shocking story was the first one um, second one the first one was iffy the second one was like killer and there are three sections each with nine stories. Now, a really good short story writer will not put every story into a collection. They will pick the strongest stories only. And if there's a weak story, it, it will normally be kind of in the middle towards the kind of the two thirds mark. You can put a, 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 a story that wasn't quite as strong as the others Let's slip it in there uh, people usually want their published you know published stories um, uh, in there you always want to open you want to open strong you want to end strong you know um, I don't think there's a weak story in that cleanness collection um, but if, if I had 50 short stories and I'm trying to assemble a collection, um, I would look at, you know, what makes a flow? Do you want to start with young people and move towards old people? Do you want to start with hometown and move to move through, you know, the big city to, you know, desert island um you know think about shape you know what kind of a shape are these stories creating um do you want to um you know clump surrealist stories um and then put realist stories uh in two different sections which do you put first? Um, you have a collection like, um, I'm trying to think of what the name of this was, but they started with stories about young people first and then moved to stories about older people. So that had a definite movement. So just think about what kind of arrangement, you know, how would you arrange your drawers? But if there's like stories of the modern West and then surrealistic sci-fi stories, you might want to think of them as two different books rather than just, you know, have a hodgepodge of, you know, like a Whitman sampler of your fiction, you know, think more in terms of a collection because that, that really hit home when he said that this is not a collection. It's just a bunch of short stories. Um, I didn't have enough stories, enough good stories, enough really good stories to um, 
organize a collection. I didn't have a collection. I had like six stories kind of on this issue, this theme, this flavor, and four stories on this flavor, this theme, you know, four stories that were are sort of uh, uh, experimental. Um, so there wasn't a collection. And the stories have to have some reason to be in there besides the fact that you wrote them. Um, so MJ asks, says, great perspectives on ver variation on form. Uh, wondering whether you've encountered a long short story you find novelesque in symphonic emotional depth themes mean meaning through a protagonist. Um, oh, there are long, you know, fabulous long short stories um, uh, that are almost novella length. Uh, novella is a very good form, too. You know, the very long short story. Like, what's the difference between a novella and a novel? Besides length, they don't investigate side issues. They're like a short story in that they move forward. Um, uh, but three, a collection that's three novellas, I mean, that's a wonderful collection. Legends of the Fall, you know, by Jim Harrison. I mean, that's that's classic. Three uh, Western stories. Um, I think All the Pretty Horses, right? That's, is that a novel? I think that's a... <sighs> Oh, well. <laughs> um, also, a novella can anchor a long short story, like a 50, 60 pager, can, um, can anchor a collection. So, uh, you know, you might have eight short stories and a novella. That's kind of a nice way of, of uh, organizing, of using the novella, the long story. Uh, perspective. Uh, let's see, the long short story, novelesque in symphonic emotional depth. Well, per, you know, uh, Chekhov's short stories, you know, certainly are like that. And they take turns and they take, some of them take years to unfold. Um, who writes a long short story? Uh, a lot of people, Cheever's stories are quite long. Um, and can can really move through a life uh, in an interesting way. Um, yeah, the I like the novella. I've not I've not tried it, but my short stories are always too long, you know, because I am a novelist. So that's a forty-page short story. You know, and most of the journals, which is where you publish your fiction, are um, if they take one forty-page story, they can't publish four ten-page stories or two twenty-page stories. It's, so it's very hard, unless you're Joyce Carol Oates or George Sanders or somebody Saunders, to get it. 40 page story published and yet you see them in in best american uh it's very difficult to get that kind of people being that confident in your work that they'll hog up their journal with some immense story of yours it's a tough one um uh, i'm trying to think of other novelesque short stories well you know all stories that move through time like a novel, you know. I mean, usually a short story is, is a moment, you know, a couple of days, whereas a novel is, you know, life. But some short stories manage to get you through a whole life. Uh, in a, a Maxim Osipov uh, is amazing. Uh, uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors, I can certainly recommend that. Um, the way the stories turn and turn. Um, what else can I tell about being, you know, moving from the short story to the novel? When you're, if you're a short story writer and you want to write the novel, oh God, Alice Munro, there's somebody who moves through a whole life and the changes, the twists, the changes in the, 
in the character and the chewing on the central problem are very novelistic uh, in Alice Munro, but I don't think she's ever written a novel. I don't think she has to. Uh, nobody has to. You know, there's this idea that you have, if you're a short story writer, it's like, yeah, we want to see a novel. And that's bitter, and that's unfair, um, because great short story collection you can read over and over and over again. Um, some people do both well. You know, some people do one better than the other, but obviously this is somebody who wants to try the novel. So, you know, how do you stretch how do you stretch out a little bit? How do you uh, stay with an idea? I mean, often short story writers are just so full of ideas and they want to work on them all. They think a novel is just throwing all of their ideas into one bucket. And the bucket doesn't necessarily handle all the ideas. Um, it's more about getting that bone in your mouth and worrying that bone rather than adding more bones, more bones, more bones. Uh, Tennessee Williams wrote amazing short stories. Edmund says, yes, Tennessee Williams short stories are magnificent. And what's interesting, there's a there's a novel about Tennessee Williams and his creative process, not a novel, short story, um, biography of Tennessee Williams and his creative process called Follies of God. Um, and he's really, Tennessee was be, became very um, despondent about his inability later on in life. He wasn't, he wasn't creating great plays, the great plays of his mature um, playwriting years. Um, you know, there were no more, you know, streetcars and summer and smoke and suddenly last summer and these great, you know, he was writing short plays, but they weren't satisfying to him. And he really was writing more short stories. But the thing was, he didn't value himself as a short story writer. He wanted that interaction with the theater world that you get when you're a playwright and you're like author, author, and you get to hang out with all the people, you go to the parties and, you know, you see some fabulous actress, you know, becoming your character. And when he was writing those short stories, he, he never value, he didn't value that change in his life. And I think as writers, we have to not get too attached to reception of the work. Uh, the big, you know, success is a place on the road. And there are lots of places on the road. You're going to go the whole road and you stop and smell the flowers and you're in some gorgeous place and that's called success. But you're eventually going to move on and there's going to be more terrain and you don't know if there's, you know, you can't stay in that meadow forever. You've got to, you know, keep moving. And what he's, what he did not value his short stories. And they're fabulous. They're fabulous short stories and well worth reading. Edmund says, my friend's mother played cards with him in Key West. Yeah, I bet a lot of people did. <laughs> or drank with him or, you know, um, many of people who've, who've dated him briefly. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, so there's the short story uh, to novel question, and uh, feel free if you want to, if you want me to write a, um, uh, if you want me to uh, create a Writing Wednesday around your question, uh, write to me on my website, JanetFitchWrites.com. And I will be happy to uh, create one of these around your question. Because if you have that question, everybody's got that question. All right. Well, have a good week and uh, stay healthy and have a good summer. Okay. Bye.